The Gospel lesson is from Mark, 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8, found on page 74 in the New Testament portion of your Pew Bible. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they may go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, lucky for us that the fear and amazement went away and that they did share what had happened. Lucky for us that we can look back over 2,000 years and see with our eyes today and through the eyes of history the meaning that this has in our lives. Help us here today, Lord, that we might open our eyes and that we might see you, our risen Lord. Amen. Most of you have probably seen the Grand Canyon, at least in person or in picture, and it is amazing. Now, Cindy and I had decided that this is one of the places that we wanted to see in the country, and about two years ago, we took a trip out to see the Grand Canyon. And we were on a bus, it was a long time, and we got up to the first stop, and it was really amazing and spectacular and, and just so vast, you could hardly take it all in. And then we went to the second stop, which was on the North Rim, and a storm came up, and it got cold, and it started to rain, and it started to sleet, and it sleeted so much that the whole ground was white for miles around. So it was not as impressive as you might think at that point. But you can't see this without being impressed that something happened there. In fact, that was one of the comments that one of the early visitors to the Grand Canyon said, surely something happened here. Well, you can go through the erosion and, and the processes of nature and, and all the things that conspired to do that. But when you see it, you believe. In the same way, when we look at Easter and the resurrection, the same response is there. Something happened there. Something happened that changed the course of Western civilization that changed the lives of the apostles, that changes us today. There are millions and millions of Christians gathered around the world today celebrating the resurrection. And you can't look back at that resurrection without knowing and understanding that something happened. Now, what happened? Well, you know what? There's some confusion about that. We don't understand everything. There are different theories about the resurrection. There are different accounts in the Gospels. There are four Gospels, and, and all the accounts are different. They, they differ in the story of the crucifixion. They, they differ in the story of the resurrection, who went to the tomb, and, and what happened afterwards. And, and so there are differences. There are other theories. There are some people that theorize that Jesus never died, that they took him down off the cross and nursed him back to health. And he went on and married Mary Magdalene, and everything was fine. There are others that think it was a dream, a vision that he had, and it didn't really happen. And on and on the stories go. It's, it's hard to know where the truth is or what the truth is. It's such a big event, but it is still inescapable that something happened there. Something happened that changed the disciples and still is happening today and changes us. The story in Mark is short, it's brief, it's not as elaborate as the other Gospels, 
But then Mark is the shortest gospel. Mark was probably the first gospel written because people were dying and they thought they should write this down before everybody dies. And, and so Mark writes that on the first day of the week, now their Sabbath is Friday night through Saturday. So the first day of the week, Sunday, becomes our Sabbath. But it was after their Sabbath, because they weren't allowed to be near the tombs or anything during the Sabbath. So when the sun comes up, the women decide to go to the tomb. Now, why they decided that, we don't know. But they did. They wanted to take more spices and more anointments because he'd already been in the tomb hastily before the, before the Sabbath because they wanted to get everything in order before the Sabbath. So maybe they thought it wasn't done correctly. And so they decided, we're going to go back. Redo it. Now, as they went, and it was only Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and, and Salome who went according to, uh, to Mark's gospel. They go back and they think, who's going to roll away the stone? Because Jesus was put in a tomb and the stone was rolled over to shut it. And that was done so that there wouldn't be any rumor that Jesus' body was stolen by his, his disciples. But they go and they think, how are we going to get in? But they get there, and the stone is rolled away. And they were perplexed. They go into the tomb, and there is a young man dressed in a white robe. Other gospels call him an angel, either one or two angels. And he said, he's not here. He is risen. He goes before you. Go and tell the disciples. He goes before you into Galilee. I guess there was some kind of prearranged meeting place. But the women fled the tomb, it says. They fled the tomb and told no one. And yet, we did find out. So they, they may have fled, but at some point, it calmed down and they decided to tell. Now, now this again is a confusing time because Jesus' body was not there. In some accounts, he was raised a physical body, in others, a spiritual body. But if it was a spiritual resurrection, what about the physical? And so there, there are just a lot of things. And, and maybe this is why the women were concerned, afraid, fearful, because they didn't understand what was going to happen. They didn't have an idea or concept that the body wouldn't be there. They weren't expecting that. It was the unexpected. And they, they were afraid. Now, I can understand why they wanted to get out of there. They just wanted to get away because it was just too different and too unreal. And I want to share a story with you because I, I really understand how the women felt. Some years ago, I was in a church that a member of the church was in a mental hospital in a Horsham Clinic in, in White Marsh near Philadelphia. So I decided that I was going to go down to visit him. It was on a, a nice summer afternoon. So I drive down there and I, I get to the clinic and I go in the main door and I talk to the receptionist and I tell her who I want to see and she said, okay, have a seat there. I'll get somebody and we'll take you to him. Okay, sat down, not too long. This attendant comes, white suit, bunch of keys. He says, follow me. Okay, so we get to the first door and he unlocks the door and we go through and there's a, a day area. There may be 20 residents there and at the other end of that is a door and we go to that door and he unlocks that door and we go through into another day area and there may have been 10 or 15 people there. And at the other end there was another door, a third door, and he unlocks that and he said, your member is in here. And there he was. So I sat down and talked with him for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And we kind of run out of conversation at that time. He was doing pretty well. I said, well, I'm going to have to go now. So I got up and I looked around and no attendant. I looked at the nurse's station, which was enclosed. And, I, and it was all glassed in. And I went over there and knocked and looked and nobody there. And I thought, well, I don't really want to spend the rest of the day here, so what do I do? How do I get out of here? So I knocked on the last door that I had come through. And nobody answered, so I kept knocking. And finally somebody said, what do you want? And I said, well, my name is Ron Rice. I'm a pastor. I was visiting one of my members, and I'd like to, to go now. Could you open the door? And the voice said, sure you are. <laughs> 
I, I knew I was in trouble at that point. I knew I was in trouble. So I looked, there was a, a courtyard that you could see through the window, and I looked out there, and there were several people out there and, and three of the attendants with them, so I, I knocked on the window there, and I caught one guy's attention, and he called the attention to the, to the attendant, and they came in and they left me out. First door, relief. Second door, relief. Third door, more relief. But I could feel that I just wanted to run away from there. I just wanted to flee from there because this wasn't what I expected. It wasn't comfortable. And I can only imagine the women. They, they go to, to the tomb and they expect there to be the body of Jesus. And they expect to put some spices on him and, and to pay their last respects. And he wasn't there. It was different. It was strange. The, the angel wasn't threatening. He was a young man dressed in a white robe. But they still wanted to get away. And, and Mark has them fleeing the tomb, just running away. Because it wasn't what they expected. And too many times, the resurrected Lord is not what we expect. They weren't thinking that he wasn't going to be there. Now, we have 2,000 years to look back, and, and so we have a little different expectation of the empty tomb and the risen Lord. But you know, in some ways, we today still don't understand the significance of, of th that that happened. And in our own way, we run away. Now, we have our, our Easter celebrations, and our Easter celebrations are great. The, the brass plays, the choir sings, the music, uh, from Lil and Linda are great and, and everything is really spectacular and, and it's uplifting and it's good. And then if we're lucky we have a, an Easter dinner and we have ham and, and we can have all the trimmings with that and, and with our family and that's good. And then we have maybe chocolate, chocolate bunnies and, and marshmallow peeps and that's good. But all of these traditions are comfortable. They're good and that's okay and there's nothing wrong with it. But there is a little discomfort in a risen Lord. There is a little discomfort and a little dismay that somehow something has changed. And we don't like change. But change is not bad. Because there is a risen Lord, it may speak to change our lives. And this is what we don't like. This is what we want to flee away from. But that's okay. The women who fled the tomb were able to calm down and they decided that this was significant. And I'm sure they shared everything because the, the word got out. The word needs to get inside us and out through us. Not in just the traditions that surround this event, but that the Lord really is risen. It's not just something that happened back there. It's something that happens here. That we serve not a, a, an empty tomb and not just an empty history, but a God that really cares about us, that's involved in our lives. And I think this is what we fear, that, that somehow we're going to have to change. And, and I got to tell you, we do have to change. We need to be more loving as God is loving. If you can understand the tremendous love that God has had for us to come into our world to speak his message of peace and love, he loves us greatly. We need to accept that. And we need to then be loving to others. And maybe this causes change, and that's okay. When we look back at the empty tomb, something happened there, changed the world. As we look at the resurrection today, something is happening today, here. It's not just a moment in the past. There is a God that is still here, in you, among us, that we are a part of this. And so as we view what is happening today, we need to make that change to find a comfort 
with this God who created the universe who enters it and is with us today. Now we don't understand all of it and we don't understand how it works sometimes because we think that God should do everything that we want, but that doesn't happen that way. But God is with us every step of our journey of life. And what he has taught us through the scriptures and through his son changes our lives. And in that change, we find an abundance in life, something that we cannot have otherwise. So look back, look back and say, something happened there, something did. But look to today as well and see that something is happening here, in you, among you. It happened, and it is happening. Be a part of it. Let us pray. Lord God, help us not only to remember, but to experience and to share and to not be like the women who were afraid and said nothing to anyone, but help us to proclaim through our lives and our voices that you are alive in us. Amen.